My name is Carmen Ife X, but your dad probably knows me as Goddess Madame Namio. I am a professional and financial dominatrix. If you would have asked me when I was 18 if I could ever see myself being a dom, I would most likely say hell no. Like, I never thought that this is a career that I would choose, but I am so grateful for it. Uh, dom work kind of came to me in the form of healing. One thing about me is I've always looked for creative outlets to sort of take my power back and to give me just the power to keep moving on. And so I did this photo project in college called Reclamation where I dressed up as a dominatrix and I dommed the frat guys that abused me in front of the frat house where I was raped and I picked a dominatrix because I always just thought like, what is the most powerful, strong, gorgeous goddess that walks this earth? Like what, 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 what is that? And Dom came to my mind. After that photo project, I was like, I need to keep doing this. So I kind of dove into the profession. You have to be extremely creative because it's like 10 jobs rolled into one. I, I am my own promoter. I am my own stylist. I do all my own videos. I am the one reaching out to clients. I am the one, like you have to be kind of everything. The cool thing about BDSM is like, it's so vast. Like there are so many fetishes and kinks out there. And that's one of the things that got me really excited about this job was when I started doing my research, being like, oh my God, I didn't even know that that was a fetish. You find out all these like new talents that you have. For example, I have these beautiful size 11 feet. One thing that I know how to do is I know how to pinch really fucking hard with my toes, really fucking hard. And I never thought that was a useful thing for anybody, but now it's just like, hey, like I get a lot of clients that are like, I want you to tie me down and just pinch the shit out of me with those toes, with those beautiful, big goddess toes. And it's like, hell yeah, I can do that. In-person sessions and my online sessions, it's really, like there, they can be so many things. So I'm always walking into a session very focused, present, and you know, like there's power in each step that I take, but also being very, very attentive, listening to the sound of my client's voice, paying really close attention to their body language, because even though we may have safe words and hand gestures that we've established in the beginning of the session, sometimes they may not be able to say it or they may not be able to get the word out or anything. That's why you need to be paying attention and know like, okay, like they look like they could use a break. They look like they could use some water. They look like there's actually a lot of care that goes into this work. And that's something that people need to understand. Like it's not just being this violent bitch. Like, I mean, I can be a violent bitch if you want me to, but there's also that element of care. Another misconception um, that people have about me and my work is a lot of people just assume that all of my clients are white men. Everyone assumes that all my submissives, all my clients are all white men and that is so far from the truth. Um, I am lucky enough to say that like a lot of black people in the community have come to do sessions with me and a lot of the times it's been their first session and i think there's also just this misconception that like you know since black people have to deal with so much oppression and so many things that are already out of their control like why would they want to go to a dominatrix like why would they want to go to this person who's gonna like abuse them and take over when actually that's the complete opposite what ends up happening like Yes, they give control over to me, but they make that choice. And I'm able to create an environment that's safe enough for them to really feel like they can make that choice. And there's something really powerful and fearless about letting somebody else just kind of take over for you and trusting them enough to go on that journey with them. And I've been so 
grateful to be able to do that for members of my community. I've also domed um, other survivors of sexual violence who oftentimes, like after you've dealt with trauma like that, you're told like you'll never <laughs> enjoy having sex again, you'll never enjoy pleasure again, like you're never gonna be able to do any kind of kink or fetish or anything because you're just kind of damaged. And I say fuck that. Fuck that, honestly. Like that's bullshit. If you go to a dom who knows what they're doing and understands the basics of it and the basics of creating a safe, secure environment, like so many things are possible and there's so much healing that can be done with that. I am really proud of what I do, even though there are a lot of things that I believe need to be changed. Like just because this has been sex work and dom work have been such a healing experience for me doesn't mean that it's not rife with racism white supremacy like you can just talk if you're a black dom there's so much more shit that you have to deal with and there are some things that even though i'm black i'm light-skinned dark-skinned doms get so much bullshit the greatest gift bdsm has ever given me is learning what healthy boundaries look like learning how what it looks like to have someone healthily respect those boundaries and also just learning to speak up for myself because when you are a black femme woman that is that that is your that is the hardest cross to bear really learning to stick up for yourself because you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't if you are a black dom or sex worker you're gonna have to deal with people lowballing you or trying to change your prices or whatever because at the end of the day there's that white supremacist element that's plaguing the entire society it seeps into everything and people are gonna lowball me because it's like oh you're black you're already like this whore like you should be happy that i'm throwing you whatever the fuck it is whereas if you are a thin white dominatrix like you are already seen as the ultimate beauty standard you could be doing the dirtiest filthiest things on your little video channel and you will still be seen as a person you will still be seen seen as someone with some kind of innocence to them like you will still be seen as a human being whereas black doms do not get that same courtesy. Working at the first dom studio that I worked at and having some of the other girls say, you know, like, because I was always, I wasn't really making any money at that dom studio because most of our clientele were Hasidic men and they didn't really want anything to do with me because I'm larger, I'm black, and like, I'm seen as less valuable. And I'll never forget one of the girls I worked with being like, you know, but if you did your makeup a little different, like you could pass as white. And it just, that just hurt me so deep inside. As an Afro-Latina woman, um, you grow up with this sort of like detachment within your body because even as a child, like I remember being sexualized from birth. This is something that black women and femmes have to face all the time where we're constantly hypersexualized. Um, we don't get that privilege of when we're kids, even being seen as kids, like where there's no innocence. Like that's the insidiousness of white supremacy that we, even as children cannot even be seen as innocent people deserving of love, care, respect, basic human rights. So growing up, I, I, I felt this detachment with my body and also just like this hatred of it in a way. Like I hated my hips, I hated my big boobs. Like I, I, just, I just had so much animosity towards my curves because I felt like, oh, I have this, that's why I'm being treated like this. I'm in this body that never really feels like my own because I have the whole outside world supposing all these things about me, that I'm this sexual object, that I'm this thing to be used. 
and that is something that I carried with me through most of my childhood and into my young adulthood like in college like I really did see myself as this thing to be used by other people because that is what society basically teaches young black women and femmes that like your worth is totally dependent on the labor you do for other people as a dominatrix i have to twist all that shit up and put it right upside down because it's not fucking true as a dominatrix i'm the one in power you have to really believe like i am this powerful goddess like look at my chest worship my body worship my brain you're grateful to even fucking look at me you are grateful that i'm even giving you the time of day this work has just really retaught me everything about not only myself but like that shame i used to have like oh i'm so big you know i take up space now it's like fuck yeah i take up space and i'm gonna take up some more shit kind of review what you may know about fetish, kink, BDSM, sex workers, sex work. And there's nothing shameful about your kink. There's nothing shameful about your fetish, but there's something so disgustingly shameful about not paying sex workers.